So far, 2005 has been all about one man, Sebastian Loeb. And here in Germany, he's the hot favourite to win again. But it's the performance of his teammate Francois Duval that will be most under scrutiny as Citroën battle with Peugeot in a manufacturer's race. To get points in uh, this rally because uh, uh, we have uh, one point now uh, behind uh, the leader uh, on the world championship for the manufacturer, and uh, it's uh, important to scoring point with uh, both cars, and it's important for Francois to do uh, a good rally. Over at Peugeot, Marcus Cronholm's recent win in Finland has done much to lift spirits. It's given his team a slender one-point lead in the championship, but the Finn isn't confident that he can beat Loeb here on tarmac. He and teammate Marco Martin know they need strong finishes to keep the Citroën at bay. It's a beautiful fight between uh, Peugeot and Citroën in this uh, championship. It will be difficult until the end of the year. OK, all depends a little bit of the weather on uh, asphalt rally. Uh, if it is dry, um, Citroën uh, may have a, a small advantage. Uh, on gravel, normally it will be equal. And uh, really, until the end, it will be very hard. Ford currently lies third in the championship, with Tony Gardemeister one of only two drivers to have scored points in every round of the season. Subaru's had to rely on Petter Solberg to bring home the bacon this season in terms of points. Despite two wins earlier in the year, they're struggling down in fourth. The much improved Mitsubishi team waits in the wings for any slip-ups. Harry Rottenpera and Gigi Galli are the Japanese team's nominated point scorers in Germany. But adrift at the foot of the points table is Skoda. This is Armin Schwartz's last season in World Rally after 17 years. And the German driver will be hoping that he can bring some points home for the Czech team on his home event. So it couldn't be tighter in the race for the manufacturer's title. Just one point separating the two French teams at the top. And confirmation of Loeb's huge lead in the drivers' championship there as well. It'll take something pretty special from one of the chasing pack to catch him. The two men most likely to do so were hoping to avoid this again this year. Grunholm was caught out by slippery conditions on day one last year. Heather Solberg even more so catastrophically. This event has more surface changes than any other rally on the calendar. With its traditionally unpredictable weather, it's a real challenge for both the drivers and their teams. Tire choice is particularly difficult. Trier is located just under 750 kilometers southwest from the capital Berlin. And there are some 19 stages and 355 kilometers of action over the three days. The event's been based in Germany's oldest city for the past four years. It runs through the vineyards high above the river Mosel, as well as through many of the picturesque villages dotted throughout this region. Sebastian Loeb was first down the ramp at a rather damp ceremonial start in Trier last night. No sign of rain, though, when the rally proper gets underway. And, as always, it's the championship leader who's first away on day one. Sebastian Loeb's record-breaking run of six consecutive wins may have come to an end in Finland, but the reigning champion is still a firm favourite to retain his crown. And the dry conditions here this morning should suit the Citroën driver's Michelin tyres. The Frenchman was born and bred on tarmac rallying, but can Marcus Grunholm build on his win at home in Finland? His Pirelli tyres historically would be inferior to Michelin on tarmac, so he may be hard pushed to repeat his victory here this weekend. So Grunholm's underway, Loeb meanwhile nearing the midway split. 
droite à fond court de Max Debout. 8 minutes and 39 seconds after 15 kilometers, a strong start from the Frenchman. Back with Granholm, how's he going to compare at this early stage of the rally? Well, he's certainly not going to beat Sebastian Loeb. Already eight seconds slower, an ominous start. Peter Solberg next up, eager to get his championship challenge back on track. Unfortunately for him and Gronholm, this year's first stage is at least dry. But he overcooks it at the hairpin, not the start he wanted. He briefly stalled the car and loses time. He does get back up to speed eventually, but damage has been done. Right plus, open to the crash long, 50, keep that to the crash, 40, bump into short ball, right plus. Vital time ticks away, the Norwegians already handed the first advantage to the Frenchman. Loeb has now finished the stage, his time was very impressive, not looking too promising here for Marcus Grunholm. Don't forget, eight seconds slower at the 15 kilometer split, and he's already 10 adrift. 13.8 down already, as he expected. Grollum can't match the speed of the championship leader here. Right, but not, not easy. I, I was too much on the brakes and uh, overheat them. And not, not good. Danny Gardemeister already has four podium finishes under his belt this season, and he's gone a long way to securing his drive with Ford for next year. Pitkä nyppy, pitkä vasen, eri miinus. Pitkä oikein eri sisältä. Ooh, a mistake here. He won't have done that vintage much good. But that was a narrow escape. Finn was lucky to get away with that. These are hardly his favourite conditions. And he's nearly 40 seconds down at the end of the stage. Further back, this is a crucial rally for Francois Duval. He's under real pressure to help Citroen in the Manufacturers' Championship. But this is the closest the tarmac expert has to a home event, and he is very comfortable on these tricky stages. That's a good start for him as well. Only three and a half seconds slower than his teammate after the midway split. Poignant moment now for Armin Schwartz. He begins his home rally for the last time as a World Rally Championship driver. It's been a disappointing season so far for the German, but he'll be giving his all for Skoda over his final six rallies. Back with Duval, has he been able to keep up that impressive opening pace? The end of the stage is coming up. And he's not going to be far away from Sebastian Loeb's time either. Goodness me, two seconds slower only. The world champion might have a fight on his hands for the win after all. So the two Citroens leading the way after stage one. Gronholm third. Good start from Ford's Roman Cresta in fourth. Galli the leading Mitsubishi out of the points down in ninth. Teammate Robin Pera 12th. The two Skoda drivers either side in 11th and 13th. Just under 13 kilometers for stage two next, the first run through the Drontal test. Czech driver Roman Cresta is another who'll be well supported by his compatriots this weekend. Being based in Central Europe, this rally draws fans from a number of the surrounding countries, including his home Czech Republic. It's been a good start too from Ford's second nominated driver, fourth after stage one. He's on course to better his best finish of the season so far, which has been a sixth place. Or have we spoken too soon? Little slip there, ran wide, clouted the wall twice, and that damage at the front on the steering could be costly. Close behind is Peugeot's Mark M. Martin. The Estonian was much improved in Finland, with new dampers making all the difference to the car and his 
confidence in it. They've been modified again for this event. The team are hopeful of further improvement. Martin and co-driver Michael Park have had to swap helmets due to an intercom problem. That's why the English flag is on the left-hand side. That seems to be resolved now. And it hasn't affected their speed either. Nearly five seconds quicker than Cresta. The fourth, Gigi Galli again, has been nominated as Mitsubishi's second point scorer. He's currently the leading driver for the Japanese manufacturer, but he's off the pace here, running only in ninth after stage two. This is only his second tarmac rally in the Mitsubishi, and he's never finished this difficult event before, so he'll be on a steep learning curve all weekend. Tarmac expert Alex Bang is back for the first time since Monte Carlo in the Scodia Fabia. He's the team's leading driver, but he too is struggling to match the speed of the pace setters. He's down in 11th. Duval's kept up the pressure on his Citroen teammates after stage two, just 3.3 seconds behind, while Martin and Crest have swapped places in fourth and fifth. Stay with us to see if Belgium's finest can catch the rally leader, his own teammate. One more stage to come before the midday service halt here in Germany, 20 kilometers of racing against the clock through the vineyards of the Moselle Valley. Marcus Gronholm says he doesn't expect to win this weekend, but he's still the best of the rest in third behind the flying Citroens. Timo Marco, teammate Marco Martin, meanwhile, has made short work of passing Roman Cresta for fourth. Now has his sights set on catching his teammate. It's a five left long, camber line. 34 right and four minus left. But a mistake from Martin, he clips a wall and he's lost a wheel. He's not halfway through the stage yet, so with over 10 kilometers to go, three wheels on his wagon, a potential disaster for the Estonian. The 307 will be next to impossible to drive through this twisty stage. He loses 50 seconds and drops to eighth overall. It just slipped the place and we went a bit wide and touched just the curb a little bit and. Uh, I don't know, maybe it came off then, or I don't know what happened. Why it's not there. Better news though for Petter Solberg. It's been a frustrating start for the Norwegian, but he's moving in the right direction on stage three. And a quick time is good enough to move him up to fourth place. Privateer Manfred Stoll has already had a remarkable second place finish to his name this season in Cyprus, but he'll find a repeat of that result next to impossible here. And there's trouble for the Austrian driver, the throttle's stuck open, he's already lost a lot of time and Roman Cresta is right up behind him. The Czech drivers steadily closing through this twisty vineyard road, but there'll be few places to pass. It's a wild ride for Stoll as well as he struggles to control his Citroen Zara with its wide open throttle. Wow, well, Crest is not going to have to worry about passing now. Stoll has just gone straight on at the corner and finds himself down in next year's vintage. This stage is certainly not taking any prisoners. Alex Bang is pushing to improve on his 11th place in the Skoda. Oh, he's caught out too. That'll be a huge disappointment for the Skoda team. They were hoping for good things from the tarmac expert on this event. Oblivious to the carnage going on behind, Sebastian Loeb's kept up his storming pace to hold off the attentions of his teammate. Tuvaldo, for the first time all year, looks like he's comfortable in his element here. He's pushing Loeb all the way, just as he did last season when he was driving for Ford. Ultimately, then, he had to settle for second. This year might be a different story. He's in equal machinery. He was 3.3 seconds behind his teammate before this stage. This is looking very fast indeed. 
Well, that's incredible. Six and a half seconds quicker. Stunning stuff from Duval, who was dropped earlier in the season. He leads a rally for the first time since joining Citroen. So all change after stage three. A new leader, Gigi Galli's now moved into the points in seventh, ahead of the dropping Marco Martin. And what about the Belgian? A changed man. Francois, you were very fast here last year and again quick. Yes, yes, again uh, quick. Uh, everything okay on the moment. It's uh, no mistake. Uh, I hope I continue on the same rhythm. Uh, if I stay on the road, it's really good. You've been told to go fast, but maybe is this too fast? Some risks have been taken this morning? It's not too, too fast. It's uh, my uh, normal rhythm. Uh, it's really good rhythm. Uh, no, I prefer I, I drive on the, my natural uh, driving. Uh, it's good the confidence come back uh, really quick this morning. You seem a bit surprised about his pace. Not surprised. Last year it was the same. He was uh, very fast. He had some trouble, and uh, but it was a big fight between uh, François and me. And uh, this year it seems to, to be the same. Marcus, those Citroens are very quick. Yeah, they are quick, yes, yes. <laughs> what can you do about it? I am not uh, fighting with them. I, I do my own rally and let them go. Is that frustrating? No, it's not because I knew it before the start that we will have trouble. So how's your rally going? It's going OK. I am leading my rally. <laughs> On to the afternoon stages, three repeated runs through the morning test. Yeah, it's been a very popular event here with the fans in Germany. Being in the heartland of Europe, it's easily accessible from all over. And Sebastian Loeb's fan club are out in force. But can the new rally leader hang on to his position? Duval came under a lot of criticism earlier in the season and even lost his place within the team for two rallies. But here in Germany, he's reminding everybody just why Sitchin signed him in the first place. He's desperate to stay in front. It's been a bit untidy, though. And this allows Loeb to reclaim the lead. Robert Crest has been reunited with regular co-driver Jan Tomanek this weekend, who's been out injured since Sweden in February. But it's not going well, he's lost it. A frustrating mistake after such a promising start from Ford's number two. Big high-speed slide. The time loss will see him drop back to fifth. A sign of how hard he's pushing, though. Without that error, he might well have taken fourth place in Petter Solberg. Well, Robin Pear will never admit to her being at his most comfortable on tarmac events. Germany, therefore, no exception. Ooh, did he miss here a note there? Whatever, completely misjudged that corner. And he'll be unable to improve on 12th after that. It's another new event for Subaru's Aussie driver, Chris Atkinson, in a season full of learning. It's also his first full tarmac event. Very narrow there, not kidding. He nearly has to three-point turn his way round. The youngster is in 16th in his Subaru, but this weekend is about experience for him. So Sebastian Loeb narrowly back in front. Duval trails by 7.7. Cresta just 1.2 ahead of Gardemeister. Stage five, and it's still a bright and sunny day here in Germany. Good news for those runners on the Michelin tyre. But it's been a frustrating day so far for Subaru's tarmac expert, Stefan Sarazan. The ex-single-seater racer has had handbrake problems this morning, and now Danny Sola is closing fast. Sarazan is in 10th, just outside the point-scoring places, but he had been as high as 6th after some very impressive testing pre-event before he hit problems. Oh, and that's not going to help. A costly mistake. Half spins, and the uh, hillsides are so steep, he's got himself beached on the edge of the drop. Well, with the help of the fans, 
The Frenchman will eventually get going, but he loses a lot of time and another four places on the leaderboard. And meanwhile, there's a real battle developing between the four drivers, Tony Gardemeister and Roman Cresta. The Czech has been outperformed by his more experienced teammate at every event so far this year. But here in Germany, it's a different story. He's currently ahead in fifth place. So what's the difference between them? Well, chiefly that Gardemeister chose tyres that were too soft this morning and he struggled for pace as a result. This afternoon, though, he's made a better selection and that seems to be making all the difference. He beats Cresta by 3.3 seconds on this stage and that's enough to claim fifth. Sebastian Loeb, meanwhile, hasn't looked back since passing Duval on the previous stage. Another fastest time sees the Frenchman extend his advantage, which is now up to 11.3 after stage five. Grunholm slips to nearly a minute adrift. Day one of Rally Deutschland concludes after the break. Welcome back to Germany for the final stage of day one of Rally Deutschland. Roman Crest is having his best event of the year since joining the Ford team. He's just narrowly lost fifth place to Tony Gardemeister and is pushing hard to reclaim it. His teammate, however, is not about to hand the place straight back. He beats Cresta again, extending his advantage to 6.2. Peter Solberg's had a steady day in a rally that's certainly not classed as one of his favourites. He had a horrific accident here last year. His best finish after three attempts is only eighth. The Norwegian is on course to better that result this season, though. The Subaru Impreza has new tarmac suspension and it's been working well. He finishes the day in fourth. Keep in the crest into six right plus half. Long give in to big cuts. One place ahead is Marcus Gronholm. Despite his 17 career victories, the Finn has never won on tarmac, and he looks unlikely to do it here. He's looking good for another podium finish, though, but he does end the day a minute adrift of Francois Duval in second place. Oikee täys, 120. Vasen eri leikkaa urat. Ihmeinen tää muotoi. Mä puhun tän 51 ja 7. Sebastian Loeb is shown again and again that the Citroen is the car to beat on tarmac. And this is his young teammate's first chance to show what he can do on sealed surface events in the Zara. The Belgian has certainly not disappointed. Despite losing the rally lead, he's the only driver putting pressure on the world champion. And he certainly won't have given up on claiming his first win just yet. To do that, though, he's got to get past the man who has won every World Rally Championship Rally Deutschland. That's four years, four wins for Sebastian Loeb. This is a classic example of the vineyard stages on day one. Lots of fast sections, punctuated by tight corners. It's very hard on the brakes and the turbo. Also very difficult for the drivers to get into any sort of rhythm, particularly if they weren't born and bred on this, like the French and the Belgians. Loeb has still managed to find another level though his rivals just can't touch him quickest again he's won five of the six stages and he has a lead of just under 12 seconds the two citrons in a class of their own grunholm over a minute further back local hero armin schwartz is just outside of the points in ninth mitsubishi's number one harry robin pair are struggling down in 11th still marcus citron dominating what can you do about it uh, for the moment nothing uh, it will be a long rally, two days more and, and, uh, and nothing to do, so so <laughs> we could stop now. Yeah. Francois, day one has gone very well for you. Yes, it's really good. Uh, first place uh, this morning, second place afternoon. It's quite good. Uh, bad luck uh, on the stage four. I lost some uh, eight seconds with uh, the clutch problem. For the rest, uh, everything OK. It's a really good day for me. Sebastian, five stage wins today and an 11 second lead. It's been very good. Yes, it's very good. Uh, it's also very good for Citroën. Uh, for the moment, we are, you have two Citroën 
in the two first position and the other far behind. So it's it's very good. Uh, now I think for the team it's important uh, to finish both uh, the race, but uh, it's also a big fight with uh, with Francois and uh, it's interesting. Interesting indeed. Six stages down, 30 more to come over the next two days. We've already seen plenty of incident here in Germany and with the fight for victory still hanging in the balance, plenty more excitement certain to come. But for now, till tomorrow night from me, Martin Haven, it's goodbye. Bye-bye.